Regional Championships. My name is Dweeha, and joining me at the table, of course, is the one and only Kimo TFC Nishimura. Kimo, welcome. What's up, guys? Good to be here. Yeah, you're here instead of in the top cut where I would have actually preferred you to be. Yeah. Because, unfortunately, true. I predicted you to win the whole thing, and now I look like a fool. I also predicted myself to win the whole thing. Yeah. And I, too, uh, am looking like a fool. <laughs> well... We have another exciting day of coverage here in Portland for you guys back at home, wherever you may be throughout the entire world. Uh, it's still pretty early over here in Portland. Maybe late wherever you're watching, but um, we're actually going to be bringing you almost all the matches, uh, mm -hmm. barring any digital versus digital copies. Unfortunately, in the top eight, we will not be able to broadcast Conan Thompson versus Bennett Piercy, yeah. which would have been a hype matchup as well. Totally. But, you know, we have three other really great matchups in the top eight. Following that, hopefully, we'll, we won't have any issues about that uh, going into the top four. And possibly in the finals, there might be a digital versus digital copy. But uh, we'll have to see how this, how this, how this, well, we have to see how this plays out, right? Yeah, uh, so root for, everyone at home should root for that not to happen. So if you know someone has a digital <laughs> copy, basically root against them automatically. Yeah. Uh, we have Alberto versus Hayden. Uh, Aaron Zhang versus Nikolai. Mm -hmm. We have Jir Wiwat versus Max Douglas, which yeah. is actually going to be our first matchup of the day. Um, you know, going into this tournament, there are uh, some players that can actually clinch their World Championships invite. Yeah. Uh, Alberto Lara, with a win, will be able to clinch his Day 1 Worlds invite. Yes. Uh, he finished yesterday as the first seed. Uh, Conan Thompson, with a second-place finish, will be able to qualify for the World Championships. That's also pretty hype. Yeah. Um, Aaron can make it, but I don't remember his... The place he, needs, he needs a second place finish. Okay, I thought it was top four. No, I, okay. I believe it's a second no, place I finish. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, a I second have no place idea. finish. <laughs> so, a second place finish will qualify Aaron Zhang for day one of the World Championships. And, of course, the players are playing for $1,000 in cash prizes as well. Big so money. Big money. Uh, all the players that have qualified for day two, the top eight have already won $250. The winner of the next That's match nice. is a $250 money match. And then after that, Pretty another two hundred fifty dollars money match. And then after that, another two hundred fifty dollars money match. That's a good way to think about it. If you like compartmentalize each amount of money, it's less pressure. Oh, if yeah. you think about it as I'm playing for a thousand dollars, you're gonna freak out. But if you're thinking about it, <laughs> only two hundred fifty dollars, relatively, you'll be way less freaked out. Yeah. Strategies right there. Yeah. Might I also add that you look very dapper today? Oh, thank you. I like your you uh, blue shirt. It's like my favorite you color. Out, you outdid me today, but oh I well. mean, I think I outdo you daily, so <laughs> it's not really anything new for me. Yeah, well, uh, it's just all right, all right. Well, uh, we're almost ready to get underway here in the top eight. Uh, go ahead and tweet at us to tell you who you have your smart money on. Uh, yesterday, me and Kimo, we actually already put our smart money down. Uh, we actually think Conan. we both agreed it would be Conan. Yes. But uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to see him play in the top eight. We'll have to wait to see him play in the top four. So uh, hopefully. That will come soon. Uh, we don't know exactly how long these matches are going to take, but, no. you know, it's... I mean, 45 minutes max. 50. It's 50? It's 50 minute time limit. It's on 45 plus, like, sudden death? Mm. Anyways. I'm hearing 50 from multiple people. I'm uh, yeah, it's... going to believe that it is 50. You're a player. <laughs> I haven't had a single time situation in this <laughs> meta game. Anyways, uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> it's it's going to be... This is actually very... Stack top cut, uh, Jeremy yeah, Watt, really Siri, hailing from Thailand. Studying in California. Studying in California. Important to note. Important to note. He didn't fly all the way over here from Thailand. I remember. Which I thought until yeah, last well, yeah. night. Well, I mean, when I saw him in Anaheim, I was just like, okay, uh, he's from Thailand. Uh, that's fascinating. But uh, he's studying over here in California, and he's going to be going up against Max Douglas from Canada. So uh, two foreign players yeah. meeting here in Portland, Oregon. Uh, that's going to be so cool. An international competition. Oh, yeah. Yeah. An Canada versus Thailand. Yeah. That's really cool. Like, honestly, uh, you don't, especially with Portland, because, like, maybe, like, San Jose or, like, SoCal Regional, I would expect some foreign people to come out. But, like, Oregon historically has been a smaller regional. You don't really expect a huge international presence outside of Canada. Right. I mean, dude, this top eight, uh, anybody can take the victory. And guess what? We are ready to get underway here with our first match of the top eight here in Portland, Oregon. Jir Wiwat, Theta Siri of Thailand versus Max Douglas of Victoria, Canada. Uh, I guess Victoria, British Columbia of Canada. 
Uh, Jerry Wewak going to be running Zerkatry, Tapufini, Mudsdale, Alolan Muck, uh, Arcanine, Porygon 2, Max running Tapu Coco, Celesteela, Porygon 2, Arcanine, Gigalith, and Garchomp. All right, so just looking at the matchup very quickly, um, one of the things that makes Zerkatry very threatening is its ability to use opponent's electric terrains, which since Max has the Tapu Coco, he's going to be a uh, bit more careful with that just because uh, at least from the Anaheim Regional, and I don't believe this has changed, that was Gigavolt Havoc Zerkatry. Um, and Zerkatry has an absolutely insane special attack. It, like, the KOs are easy pickings with the Z-move as long as he doesn't fire into the Garchomp slot. He does have to be a bit careful with his own Tapu Fini just because it's not applying a ton of pressure against Coco Celesteela, but it, like at the same time, very good against Gigalith, Arcanine, Garchomp. So the matchup, kind of even. You have Mudsdale stopping the Coco. You have Celesteela stopping the Mudsdale. You have Zerkatry stopping the Celesteela. I wouldn't say the team matchup was too big uh, a sway either way. Yeah. Uh I'm just excited to see these two players. Uh, Jira Wewat, he actually defeated you in Anaheim. So oh, he totally I'm, did. I'm excited to see how that's going to well, Let's not talk about out. the details of how that happened. Well, but we won't. He we did. won't. We won't. We won't. Uh, so going into the match right now, Porygon 2 and Arcanine coming out for uh, Jira Wewat, I believe, is on bottom. No. No. Max is on the bottom. Max is on bottom. All right. Max is on bottom. Jira Wewat on top. Jira Wewat leading Garchomp and Arcanine. Uh, Max going to be leading Porygon 2 and Arcanine. So Intimidate's oh no, coming Max out. is on top. You sure? Yes. Well, because at first I forgot that Jira had Porygon 2, but then I realized that Jira doesn't have Garchomp because he has Mudsdale. Right. Okay. All right. So Max on top. Figuring it out. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Uh, well, the position, the lead matchup looks to favor uh, Jira, I think. Garchomp. Isn't super threatening when you have Porygon 2 out. A lot of uh, Porygon Ice Beams just pick off the Garchomp pretty easy. Some do train themselves to be a bit more specially defensive to take a single Ice Beam, but even uh, even then, you've been intimidated. Garchomp is the one on the field that does, likes that the least. Yep, and we see Arcanine over on Jiru Wewat's side switch out. Going to go straight into that Mudsdale. Uh, yeah, maybe trying to get a stamina boost here as Porygon 2 going to switch in for Max's side. Probably trying to bring in his Trick Room counters right now because this Porygon 2 looks like it will be able to get a, a Trick Room. As Porygon 2 gets a, an attack boost over on Max's side, and Arcanine goes for a Snarl right here. Going to go ahead and drop Porygon 2's special attack stat and also drop Mudsdale's special attack stat, but it's going to go ahead and activate the stamina instead, boosting the defense. And, you know, Mudsdale's actually a physical attacker. It doesn't really yeah, care. Yeah, that was definitely a worthy trade. You'd rather have a high relevant defense stat than a lowered irrelevant special attack stat and it's worth noting that Porygon 2's download boost for Max got an attack increase. This reveals at least the potential for him to notice that that is Assault Vest Mudsdale. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean uh, Assault Vest Mudsdale is pretty cool. Boosting that special defense and also boosting those defenses with the uh, yeah, stamina it, ability. It really can just stay around for the whole game as long as you don't burn it which potentially Max's Arcanine can do. Oh yeah. Uh, this looks more like a support Arcanine with Snarl uh, probably trying to drop all sorts of phys uh, attacking powers over on Jerry Wewat's side. As we see Porygon 2 switch out, Zerkatry now going to come in, going to try to take care of this Trick Room. Zerkatry is kind of a middling speed. Uh, we do see Celesteel switch in for that Arcanine as well. And the high horsepower from that Mudsdale connects on that Porygon 2. As the Porygon 2 on Max's side goes for an Ice Beam in that Mudsdale, again, that Assault Vest does so much work. But it gets oh. a freeze right there. So unfortunate, we'll have to see if that Mudsdale can thaw out. Does get a stamina boost at the same time, though. That looks very familiar, but <laughs> happening to Jira. Uh, that said, the turn was very well played by Jira. He didn't fall for the Arcanine to the Celestia switch, opting to just high horsepower Porygon 2 and get some chip damage on that, while at the same time realizing that he can go to the Celestia switch, putting in his Zerkatry. Neither of Max's Pokemon really do anything to Zerkatry at all. If it's a boosting set, he can get a pretty easy tail glow in and have a dominant control over the game. The freeze really does hurt him because it limits his momentum in the match but if he unthaws which is you know quite possible um he's in a fine position and Celesteel now protecting itself not wanting to take an electric type attack from that circuitry uh circuitry has a sky high special attack stat mudsdale cannot thaw out gonna stay frozen not able to move and we s we have max's porygon to now go for a physical return on that circuitry as we see circuitry now go for the gigavolt havoc it looks like probably gonna target down this uh celesteel gonna break through that protect and deal a little bit of damage, but 
you know, it's still super effective coming from Zergachi Sky High Special Attacks. That not exactly sure how much damage is going to do. Yeah, I'm interested in seeing that as well. Um, they do about, uh, is it a third? A, a fourth. fourth. Yes. A fourth. It's no, oh, actually go straight for the Porygon 2 read. here. And, well, that makes sense. Porygon 2 cannot protect. Uh, a lot of Porygon 2 do not op uh, opt for protect. And Porygon 2 gets all the way down to, like, less than 25%. Uh, Mudstone and Thong right now would be excellent because it can pick off the Porygon 2 easily with a high horsepower or uh, some other coverage move. Um, if you remove Porygon 2, again, Zerkistry looks very good. It did take more damage than I would have liked from uh, Porygon 2, and I didn't really think about the return possibility. Even though he was intimidated earlier. Oh, no. Did I switch? Yeah, that switched in. I'm sorry. It was not intimidated earlier. Plus one return. Uh, a surprising amount of 50% of Zerkatree's health. Celestial now switching out. Not going to want to stay in. Sending in Garchomp right now. Is Zerkatree going to go uh, Thunderbolt into that slot? Mudsdale continues to stay frozen. Unfortunately, cannot pick off that Porygon 2 with a high horsepower. Instead, Porygon 2 gets to recover. Now Porygon 2 gets to stay on the field for just a little bit longer. And now Zerkatree goes for a Thunderbolt. Going to connect on that Garchomp. Uh, thanks to that grounding, not going to do any damage at all. No, Max is playing this pretty well. He's made efficient switches. He's protected Arcanine earlier, even though it didn't quite work out. It was an intelligent play. The guard chomp into Zerkatry. Doesn't care about the electric attacks. He's, uh, like, just because freeze happened doesn't mean it's always going to benefit each player equally. He's using it well. He's he's able to preserve his pouring on two and gain the momentum from the basic lack of a slot right there. It's it's a basic two-on-one situation, and Max is using it well. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of players do uh, leave their frozen Pokemon out just trying to hope that they thaw. Porygon 2 on Jira's side, switching in, going to get an attack boost as Mudsdale continues to stay frozen, and that's so, so unfortunate because that Porygon 2 could have gotten knocked out, and now Max's Porygon 2 recovers and heals back to full health. Now you have to take down this Porygon 2 just again. As Garchomp uses it, trying to set up Story Sense as Trick Room is going to expire here. Wouldn't be surprised to see Ground EMZ on that Garchomp. Uh, Garchomp is incredibly powerful once it gets a Sword Stance up. The Z move with a Sword Stance from a Garchomp can take out almost any, if not all, Porygon 2. Uh, Porygon 2, traditionally known for being a very bulky, reliable Pokemon, the ability to one hit KO it is insanity. A lot of players uh, try to decide what move their Garchomp should have. Obviously, a great yeah, Earthquake move. is the standard. Poison Jab, Fire Fang, uh, Dragon Claw, Rock all slide. great options. Rock Slide, Stone Edge, all great options. But Sword Stance has kind of become the standard now. Yes, it's it, it's, it's very popular. It, it, for good reason. There's lots of um, preservation turns, substitutes running around. You want to be able to uh, take advantage of the turns where they're on the defensive. Yeah. Arcanine switching in, going to go for the Intimidate now. Going to lower Garchomp's Sky High attack stat down just a notch here. And also Intimidate that Porygon 2. As the Garchomp now goes for a Tectonic Rage, most likely going to target down this Porygon 2. Is it going to be enough with that Intimidate? Is Probably that Intimidate going to be enough? So usually, it depends on the way uh, Jira's Porygon 2 has been trained. But generally, um, plus one Tectonic Rage is not enough to get the one-hit KO. We'll have to see. Uh, Porygon 2 going to take this Tectonic Rage right now. Uh, if it gets knocked out, that's going to be unfortunate because it looks like this is the turn that Jiro wants to set up Trick Room. Porygon 2 barely hangs on thanks to that Intimidate, but instead Porygon 2 targets down the Garchomp with an Ice Beam. Is it enough to KO? No, it Ooh. is not. As Porygon 2 on uh, Max's side goes for an Ice Beam, connecting on Porygon 2, that should be enough to pick up. Oh! Oh, wow! Porygon 2 hangs on with just two hit points. What a reliable partner in Porygon 2. Porygon 2, a very bulky Pokemon, taking a one stage of increased attack, Tectonic Rage, and Ice Beam at the same time. Look. I suppose that Jiro can extreme speed or maybe if just he be has faster it. another way if he has with it. Arcanine. But just looking at the situation, um, pressing Earthquake for Max shouldn't be a, a hard way to take this game. It's an injured Porygon 2, an Arcanine, a Zerkatry, but he doesn't stay in. Arcanine, or sorry, Garchomp switches, in, switches out for Max's own Arcanine here. Going to go for an Intimidate, uh, dropping Arcanine's attack stat, Porygon 2. Uh, Porygon 2's attack stat as well. Arcanine on Jira's side goes for a Flare Blitz. Going to hit this Arcanine for minimal damage because it's not very effective at all. Uh, great switch right there from uh, Max to kind of lower yes. the damage output of Arcanine. As Porygon 2 on Jira's side using this turn to recover. Great time to use the recover button right there. And yep. Porygon 2 on Max's side goes for another return on that Porygon 2 slot. I mean, that turn showed you that Max did his research last night. Um for those at home that don't know, Jira is a bit infamous for running Choice Scarf Arcanine. That was the rage uh, on Twitter. Yeah. Yes, it really... Yeah. <laughs> it, oh, trust me, I know. 
And, um, you know, preserving the Garchomp, which can easily turn into a win condition later, was a great move by him. He basically made Arcanine uh, kind of ineffectual. Uh, it's stuck in a fire move, which his, the opposing Arcanine doesn't care about. It's intimidated. And we've seen that both Porygon 2 can stay on the field for prolonged periods of time. The Arcanine for Jira isn't really doing a lot. Max has really kept a good hold of momentum the entire set. Arcanine on Jira's side switching out. You also have to respect the fact that Arcanine can carry extreme speed, like you said. Yes. Uh, maybe if, even if Max didn't do the research, you know, he was probably worried about that extreme speed as well. Zerka Tree going to switch in, and that Frozen Mudsdale continues to come in, maybe trying to bait yes. a Flare Blitz in that slot. Going to hit. What's it going to hit? It's going to hit the Porygon 2 slot. It's going to thaw out that Ooh. Mudsdale. Great switch right there from Jira. Activating the stamina, but at the same time. That was a lot they, of damage. They could still get knocked out from possible Ice Beam. But instead, we see Porygon 2 go for a return. Going to hit the circuitry. Uh, is it gonna, no, it's not going to be enough thanks to all those Intimidates that have dropped Porygon 2's attack stat. So great switch right there from uh, Jira to thaw out his own Mudsdale. No, that was a very effective switch, and that was a good play. The problem is that Mudsdale probably can't take another one. And I'm kind of doubtful that circuitry can pick up the KO on Arcanine just because they tend to be very bulky. So when you consider that Jira has very injured Mudsdale, very injured circuitry. And Ar Choice Arcanine, that is kind of easy to contain. It's looking like Max is, uh, has a very clear path to taking the first game. Yeah, I mean, Ma Max's team is still fairly healthy. He has that damage guard chomp in the back, but. I mean, the, the Pokemon time, that took the most damage for Max was Porygon 2, and he recovered it all off. Right, and he still has Celesteela. Uh, Jiro Uwat realizing that, you know, he needs to maintain as many Celesteela counters as possible because he does not want to lose to a possible 1v4 Celesteela if he can somehow get it into that position. Uh, Arcanine switching in for that circuitry. Going to take this uh, Flare Blitz like a champion and also drop some Intimidates onto the Porygon 2 and the Arcanine. As Porygon 2 goes for an Ice Beam on that Mudsdale, is it enough to KO? It is enough to pick up the KO. So unfortunately, Mudsdale did not underspeed that Porygon 2 and was unable to go for a possible high horsepower on that Arcanine. I mean, the problem, the thing with that play is I feel like Jira just didn't have a lot of choice. We saw earlier that Mudsdale was underspeeding the Porygon and Trick Room, so he, we knew that it was actually slower. The problem is that he doesn't really have a ton of effective switch-ins. He could have went for the Arcanine, but he, he believes, at least based on his decisions, that Zerka Tree is very important to winning. Now, I don't know if I actually agree with that because it's in extreme speed range now, but... He's in, in a spot in the game where he doesn't really have a lot of resources. He can't really build any momentum to take this game. If I were Jira, I would really just be thinking about how I can improve on game two at this point. Fair. And you have to you do have to do that. You know, there is a time limit to each round. You have to kind of admit your losses. But at the same time, you want to try to milk the opponent for as much information as possible. Yes. As Celsteel comes in on wow. a Flare Blitz doing a lot of damage. Arcanine also doing a lot of damage back to itself. And Porygon 2 on Jira's side. Going for a recover, just Porygon just trying to stay on the field as long as it possibly can, but that was an unfortunate switch right there, uh, but maybe he just th feels like Celesteel isn't his matchup. Well, see, that might Ooh, have been an unfortunate hit. switch long-term, but Celesteel really isn't necessary for Max to win. If Jira believes that Zerka Tree is the key to winning, why do you need Celesteel? That was the sure. one that was most available to take a hit, and the recoil damage was huge. Yeah, and that critical hit uh, definitely paying off from that return on that Porygon 2, on yeah. that Arcanine, uh, pretty much allowing it to pick up the KO there. As Zerka Tree comes in, and, you know, it's still 4-2. to two. Uh, Porygon 2 can't stay on the field, but it just cannot. I don't think it just, I don't, I just don't think it can take that one-on-four situation. It can't. Because both Porygon 2 would just recover, but Max would have a partner that would pressure the other one recovering. Yeah. And now Celesteel protecting itself as Zerka Tree goes for a Thunderbolt. Going to hit this Porygon 2 here. Uh, possible chances for paralysis, possible chances for a, f well, nope, no chance for a freeze there. And Porygon 2 content to knock out the Zerga tree right here. And, you know, just make him, make Max one step closer to being able to seal up game one here in the top eight. I do like that play from Jira just because it was, to me, sort of aggressive. If this prediction works, I'm back in this game. He ice beam the Celesteel slot because he didn't want it to protect. He wanted him to switch into Garchomp to pick up that KO. That's fair, yeah. 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 And it looks like Jira is going to go ahead and concede game one. He has as much information as he wanted and maybe doesn't want to reveal more information possibly. Yeah. So this is a game of information, everybody. Uh, strong showing by Max there. Preserved all four Pokemon. It is true that the freeze have really helped his momentum. He was able to set up Swords Dance. He was able to recover off all that damage. Preserve his Porygon too. But Max still made 
I think, the most advantage out of switching. He he was able to contain Arcanine pretty much the entire time. Um, the Zerkatry Z move ended up being sort of ineffective just because he recovered off all the damage. In terms of adjustment, what I would like to see from Jira, maybe try integrating that Tapu Fini. Max show, showed no Tapu Koko in the last game. He showed Arcanine, Garchomp, Celesteela. So Celesteela is potentially annoying for Fini, I suppose. But in general, they're not huge boon or not boons, banes to Tapu Fini, especially when you can support it with things like Zerkatry or Porygon 2 or Mudsdale. Like all, a lot of the Pokemon that Jiro chose were very helpful in that matchup. Um, that said, Max could I identify as well that Tapu Fini is looking like a good pick for game two bring his own Coco, but I don't think he'll actually do it out of fear for that Zerkatry. The Z-move damage that you saw earlier on Porygon 2 was really high mm -hmm. without terrain. Like, in terrain, that's going to be a nightmare. You don't want to boost your opponent's attacks at all. Well, that's that, one that of the problems like with Tapu strategy. Coco as a um, terrain setter, I think. It's the one that is most abusable by the opponent. Getting ready to go now into game two between Jiro Wiwat versus Max Douglas. Porygon 2 and Top of Fini, the go. adjustment that you wanted Jiro Wiwat to make, uh, he made it as Arcanine and Porygon 2 are sent out for Max's side. Going to drop the Intimidate onto Porygon 2 and Tapu Fini, but not going to matter too much. Tapu Fini, known to be more of a Muddy Water Moonblast yeah. user. Muddy Water Moonblast kind of guy. Yeah. The thing about uh, Tapu Fini here, if it is Calm Mind, this position is excellent. Because neither Porygon 2 or Arcanine really can stop it. We know that Porygon 2 on his side doesn't have Thunderbolt. And we know that Jira probably has a way of lowering Porygon 2's physical attack stat. If Arcanine doesn't have Wild Charge, which it could because Tapu Koko is on his team, then really neither Pokemon can stop Tapu Fini from setting up Calm Mind. Now, if it's a different soil set, like Specs or Water EMZ or something, um, Muddy Waters aren't hard to throw out. The lead matchup is looking positive for Jira. Just by the Tapu Fini. Just which, by the Tapu Fini. In my professional opinion, <laughs> excellent call. <laughs> Mudsdale going to switch in right now. Going to possibly try to uh, take any wild charges that could have been yes. thrown there or even just take a snarl here. Again, Mudsdale taking that snarl and taking the special attack drop. But hey, guess what? It gets a defense boost thanks to that stamina ability. Uh, Porygon 2's special attack st stat does drop. Unfortunate for this Porygon 2. As it goes for a try attack here, going to hit this Arcanine. Uh, but thanks to that snarl, going to minimize the amount of damage. And Porygon 2 going to go for a return on that Mudsdale doing... Decent amount of damage right there, but going to go ahead and give Mudsdale another stamina boost. No trick room. No trick room. I wonder if that was the correct play. I, uh, he, got a good, he got good mileage out of stamina on that turn. The snarl was like, okay, and then you boosted your defense, and now you take even less from the return. But, like, I don't, I'm unsure if he can really use it to its full capability just because it does bug Arcanine, but he probably has Celesteel on the back again, and Porygon 2 really doesn't care that much. On the other hand, because of the Snarl, Jira's own Porygon 2 isn't very threatening a presence. If he had just stayed in with Feeny, he might be at minus one defense, or minus one special attack, and taken the return. But the Muddy Water damage might offset that. And be, it's just more of a presence. Yeah, and being able to ship away this Arcanine, you know, being able to recycle those Intimidates is huge. Porygon 2 on Max's side goes for an Ice Beam onto the Mudsdale. No freeze. Stamina going to go ahead and activate yet again. So now it's at three stages of increased attack. Muzzo goes for a close combat. Going to hit this Porygon 2 for super effective damage, but still so bulky. Wow. Only 50% damage done to it. Going to drop the defenses, uh, you know, pretty much nullifying the, uh, the assault, assault vest. vest and also dropping the stamina boost by one stage mm -hmm. or the stamina boost that it received. Uh, Porygon 2 does take this turn over on Jira's side to set up a trick room. Well, Mudsdale... It's looking a lot better now than it was in the previous turn because we have s the damage on Arcanine. Arcanine could probably take a high horsepower, I would think. But the close combat did a lot more damage than I expected on the Porygon 2. And he can't just come in and intimidate the Mudsdale. This mean so you have basically a, a threatening presence on both of Max's current Pokemon and Tapu Fini in the back. You can go for an easy close combat into Fini's switch on the Porygon 2. You can go for high horsepower on the Arcanine. Max realizing that Porygon 2 is heavily threatened right now. Going to try to switch out the Porygon 2 and go straight into Celesteela as Porygon 2 on Jira's side switching out. Going to ah. go into Zergatry, so maybe expecting that Celesteela to come in. 
going to counter with his own circuitry or just use his time to have Trick Room just be be aware. Uh, Jiro's been really good with the circuitry switch-ins. Every, uh, it, the same, you notice a lot of the same switches in this game from the last game. Every time Celestia came in, at least initially, Zerkatry came in. Mm -hmm. Jira's prediction game is very on point today. It's the problem is more can his team accommodate those predictions? Yeah, unfortunately, we did have that Arcanine go for a snarl on Jira We Wet side. Gonna drop that Zerkatry special attack stat, which may allow Celestia to hang on after a Thunderbolt, depending on how Celestia and Zerkatry are trained. We, I believe, we did see yesterday against Brandon Tutenhagen that uh, Max and Celestia actually got defensive boosts. It did from it Beast did. Boost. It did physically defensive. the The standard special or uh, the standard increase in stats on a Celestia Beast boost is actually special defense. So it wouldn't surprise me if Circuitry did might maybe a bit more attack than you would expect. But the snarl it really is going to bug Circuitry. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if. He's just going to Z-move it out to try, like, a get around the Snarl problem. Arcanine switches out. Going to go into Garchomp here to maybe better combat that Zergatry. As still, still now using Protect. Not going to want to get uh, take a lot of damage from the Zergatry at all. Mudsdale goes for a high horsepower. Garchomp going to take this a lot better than Arcanine would have. Doing a fair amount of damage, about 40%. Oh. Going for a hidden power into that Celesteel. Uh, like unfortunately the protected. Yeah, I mean, that's a very good coverage move on Zergatry to have. Uh, well, at least, I mean, the position is still pretty good for Jira. The Trick Room is still up, I believe. And so you have an electric move that can threaten the Celestia, and you have an ice move that can threaten Garchomp. Even the Snarl, like, the the residual damage that the other two have taken means that Zergatry should still be able to get around them and pick up KOs. Uh, the quad weakness of ice on Garchomp makes the low power of hidden power not matter as much. Yeah. The Z-move on Giggle Havoc makes the Snarl not matter as much if he's going for Celesteela. And Mudsdale's honestly doing a lot more damage than I keep expecting. <laughs> You're not... Dude, Mudsdale's like the dark horse for you, man. You don't expect the to dark do... The dark horse. You don't it's expect to do much damage at all. The dark horse. Max gonna withdraw Celesteela. Gonna send in the Porygon 2 to better take this electric type attack. Uh, Porygon 2 uh, gets a download boost Regardless of what it is, it's going to enjoy it. Gets a special attack boost for once. As Garchomp does not want to possibly take a hidden power from this Celesteela. Mudsdale going for a rock slide right here. There's a rock slide. There's a chance. As Porygon oh. 2 dodges the attack, not going to take any chip damage from that at all. But now we do see the Gigavolt Havoc from the Zerg Tree going to connect. Almost what? certainly on the Porygon 2. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, unless you're going for some read on that Garchomp switching out. But, you know, it's just safer to go for that Gigavolt Havoc. Absolutely. And what was that Celesteela? And it does connect on that Porygon, too. Uh, not sure how much damage it is going to do because of the fact that it has one stage, is one stage of decreased special attack. It's going to be close, I think. Uh, no, unfortunately. I wonder Porygon if the rock cannot. slide miss matter. That's fair, but it is still a uh, split target rock slide. Yeah, no, it definitely could have taken the hit. And for once, you're actually predicting that Mudsdale would do possibly more damage than I expect. Well, I mean, it's least, close. It's close. Yeah, yeah. It's close. I, again, it, it might be the last turn of Trick Room. Jira can still make it work because you can threaten the Porygon too, even if it decides to switch back into Arcanine or Celestia, which it might. But he could also just go for recover. Zerkatry, it can it, just hidden power the Garchomp, pick it off easy, or predict that Thunderbolt that slot like a true player. Oh. No, instead we see the high horsepower connect onto the Porygon 2, and it looks like this might be two KOs for Jira Wewat here. As Zergatry does go for a hidden power, going to hit this Garchomp and pick up the KO, and also at the... Oh! oh! No! I'm wrong. <laughs> Oops. Tectonic Rage from that Garchomp coming out, and that's such an unfortunate survival oh, for, for Jira Wewat, but, you know, fortunate for... Max, maybe Max knew. Yeah, I was just wondering the same thing. Maybe he was running some calculations last night. Well, I mean, that snarl from way earlier paying off so huge. Uh, that Zergatry missing that KO because of that as oh, now Zergatry man. gets KO'd. Unfortunate. That, for Jira, that is rough. For Jira. And the Twisted Dimensions return to normal. <laughs> so we know that Jira has Tapu Fini pouring on two. Yeah. Celestela is looking pretty good right now. Mudsdale generally has a terrible matchup against Celestela, which is part of why you don't see Mudsdale everywhere. 
Uh, Tapu Fini, like, sure, I can kind of bug it, but if, if you're not Calm Mind or Choice Specs, which he might not be, Celesteela doesn't really care. You also have Garchomp to, you know, cover fire for the Celesteela, so to speak. So, if Celesteela just starts getting up Leech Seeds, Max should have the game. That's a possibility, yeah. I think so. Uh, you know, you lose Zergatry, you kind of lose an ability to hit yeah. that Celesteela. Porygon 2 is already revealed that has Ice Beam and Tri-Attack, I believe, right? Yes. Not the Bolt Beam variant? Yeah, there's no Thunderbolt, which is why Celesteela really just doesn't care about Porygon 2. Porygon 2 switches in, going to get a special attack boost as Garchomp goes for a Poison Jab, going to hit this Tapu Fini for super effective damage, doing about 40% damage as Tapu Fini goes for a Muddy Water, should be able to pick up the KO on this Garchomp. Uh, could possibly drop some accuracy yeah. on Celesteela to make Leech Seeds miss, but unfortunately we don't see any of that for Jira, and Celesteela now content to set up Leech Seeds on that Porygon 2 slot and slowly chip away at that Porygon 2. It's a rough situation. Arcanine is just going to come back in and press Snarl, and he's probably faster than both of Jiro's Pokemon. Um, so you have a physically defensive Celesteela with special attack dropping potential on your team. So you don't really care about attacks from either side of the spectrum. Celesteel is really just going to set up Leech Seeds, take its time, relax, sit back, heal up. Leech Seed can still miss. Leech that's, that's, can that's miss. That's what Jiro's hoping for. Uh, you, you can get mud Muddy Water drops, Muddy Water critical hits. Hope Muddy Water doesn't miss for you. <laughs> but I, I think that's his out. I really think he has to rely on Muddy Water at this point. Snarl can miss. Snarl can miss, yeah. Uh, it didn't, but it could have. <laughs> it could have. Top of Fini's special attack stat going to get dropped. Uh, the critical hit, not going to matter too much. Just a little, possibly ending this game slightly faster. As Porygon 2 has its special attack stat dropped as well. The Muddy Water comes out. It's going to connect on both Pokemon. Not going to be enough to connect. Wow. Or not at all. These, This is such a bulky team. And Celesteela does get up the leaf seat on that top of Fini. Even Arcanine didn't really care about that. Uh, probably a more supportive Arcanine. As Porygon 2 goes for a try attack connecting on that Arcanine. Oh, going to activate that uh, berry on Arcanine's side. Going to be the Mago Ooh, berry. The Mago Doggo. The, oh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, really, at this point, I'm like sticking to my guns on the, the, the last turn analysis. Jira has to rely on muddy water RNG to get through this situation. Otherwise, there's just nothing you can really do. I don't believe he's Calm Mind because if he was Calm Mind, this is the time to do it. You might be matching it with Snarl. but Temporarily until you can yeah, exactly. knock out Arcanine. Yeah, exactly. That's why he's tri-attacking. Like, you, you nail it down bit by bit. Well, he still has uh, the Mudzail in the back, so he can still switch around to maybe reset those uh, drops and reset that Leech Seed as well. Uh, but such an... I mean, if you're Jira, you just saw that Arcanine heal way back up. Yeah. Thanks to that Mago Berry. And I I don't think even if he hit Tri Attack Muddy Water again that Arcanine would be KO'd. The Snarl's adding up. Arcanine's going to be around for a while. And he protects, so like he's Arcanine gonna be around for yeah, a while. Probably expecting that top of Fini to maybe switch to reset the uh, stats or even that leech seed. Now the muddy water does connect onto the Celesteela. Celesteela heals back so much, and Celesteela now gonna go for the heavy slam, uh, hitting this top of Fini, kind of targeting it down because he knows as long as that top of Fini goes down, I most likely have this game in the bag for sure. No, he absolutely has it if Fini goes down. Mudsdale cannot touch Celesteela. And you're getting a Porygon 2 that's, what, two, three Snarls now? It's not going to happen. I mean, to be fair, it did get a special attack boost, but uh, Jira just will not have the resources uh, because of the fact that that Snarl from Arcanine from way before hit that Zerga Tree and prevented it from being able to pick up the KO on that, cells, or on that Garchomp. I mean, Max's team was just really able to contain Jira's very well. He never had... He never gave Zerkatry the ability to abuse electric terrain. He never really dealt with Mudsdale in too problematic a way. Game one, yeah, but like the freeze really helped out. Don't forget that one. Um, Tapu Fini was a good adaption, but the what really mattered there, and I, this would have gotten anyone. I would have gotten surprised by this. The Hidden Power Ice not picking the KO on that Garchomp was huge. Yeah. 
Arcanine goes for a Flare Blitz into that Tapu Fini, uh, not going to be able to get the KO just yet. The Heavy Slam also goes into that uh, Tapu Fini as well to go for... Uh, oh. uh, all right, so now Porygon 2 going to try to recover and stay on this field as long as po as it possibly can. Uh, yeah. He fights till the end. I mean, you can still try attack and freeze the Cell of Steel, and once the terrain ends, you could probably paralyze Arcanine and maybe hope for the fact that it can't move. I mean, I, even if he froze the Celesteela, the Celesteela is going to win. Like, the, he could, like even if he's frozen, you don't need to be active to be like, Leech Seed is really nice. <laughs> Fair, but you could possibly force some sort of tiebreaker situation. That's the that's the scenario that maybe Jira has. That that's, his no, only, that's his only out. No way. That's his only out right now. But If he has a watch on, he'll know that's impossible. Uh, Arcanine picks up the KO on that top of Fini with the extreme speed. Uh, waiting until the end to reveal that. As Celesteel goes for a flamethrower, hitting that Porygon 2. Uh, not much damage dealt at all as Porygon 2 uses his turn to set up Trick Room. Mudzilla is going to be able to come in. Maybe even oh. pick the KO on Arcanine. If he gets like... Man, it's got to be like five Rock Slide flinches. He can win. He has a very uphill battle. It's like trying to run up a hill... I mean, With I think rock the hill analogy is not enough. I'm, this is an up mountain battle at Everest, this point. Everest, Everest, not even Everest. Whatever the highest mountain is he, on any planet. Jiro is at base camp, only base camp. He's, he's still got to go all the way up that mountain. It's there's still some crazy out. There is. There is still some crazy out. Arcanine protecting itself, not gonna want to get KO just yet. Munzo goes for a rock slide, could possibly flinch here. Uh, like I said earlier, if there's a rock slide, there's a way. Celestial oh, gonna, gonna get hit by a rock side. That does uh, about oh, four. Oh, that, that All right, critical hit. Alive. Yeah, oh, try attack on that Celestial. Can it get a freeze? Paralysis? Anything? Oh, oh hey, no! Freeze! Hey, oh, hey there's God. one thing. Oh, Celestial thaws out oh, immediately. My. Goes for a leech seed though. That is part of why freeze is one of the most annoying mechanics in the game. It can you can unthaw immediately. So when you see it like yes, I got a freeze, and it goes away, it's just like both players is just a very emotional, silly moment. Yeah. I mean, you, the audience right now is just yelling, "Why are you up for a try attack? If you want to freeze? You go for the ice beams." That's because true. he that's, probably that's doesn't just want freeze. He'll, he'll probably take burns. At no, this point. you don't want the burn. You want the well, if you, you the if if he rock slide flinched and got the burn, and then on the next turn got a rock slide flinch again, the damage will add up way faster. Well, yeah, but still. <laughs> I mean, he still needed like a bajillion rock slide flinches. Well, here's another rock slide gonna hit this Arcanine, gonna hit the Cell of Steel here. Arcanine that that did that does fair damage. That to Arcanine. does fair damage. And Porygon two goes for a try attack here. Gonna hit the Cell Seal. Can well, he get another get freeze in. or anything like that? Not very effective. Bro, oh! that's flinches. Oh, all right. Well, Cell Seal goes for the flamethrower. Gonna hit this Mudzail. Uh, no, really, I, I think it's just gonna minimize the amount of Leaf Seed health he'll heal back because the Mudzail is gonna get KO'd before maximum Leaf Seed damage. And the Snarl hits the Mudzail, hits the Porygon two, less health that. Mudzel will see back. So and Porygon 2 has like no special attack left. That guy is tired. Yeah. Yeah. Uh has to somehow find a KO on this Arcanine, but unfortunately Mudzel is gonna get knocked out. I mean very well played for Max. Uh, he contained that situation. <laughs> like that's uh, I think the set shows one of the problems that I have with Scarf Arcanine. It's a it's a cool set. And it's, it's really cool in more offensive matches. But Max played this game in more of a slow setup kind of way. He was able to contain Scarf Arcanine so well in the first game that it wasn't even worth bringing in the second game. But the problem with that is that makes it so Jira's only answer to Celesteela is Zerkatry, which he can contain through Snarl and Garchomp. Yeah, and it looks like Jira's actually already willing to forfeit the match. I don't blame him. Yeah, well... He, he had some op outs, but unfortunately, just not quite enough. Canada takes it over Thailand. Slash California. No, I, I'm not playing that game. <laughs> the only California on here is uh, Alberto Lara. I guess Aaron. Aaron is honorary California, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. 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 Uh, Aaron so constantly talks about how the West Coast is superior to the East Coast, actually. Max is going to go ahead and move on to the top four. Uh, he is going to already assure himself $500, lots of championship points as well. Uh, 
he awaits the winner of Conan and Bennett, who I'm not sure if they've already played or not. We'll try to see if we can get an update for you, uh, the viewers back at home. We still have two more top eight matches here to broadcast to you, the viewers back at home. Yep. Alberto Lara versus Hayden McTavish and Aaron Zhang versus Nikolai. So hopefully... Both of whom are sitting right in front of us. Yeah, I think they're almost. <laughs> I think they're almost ready, and I think we're gonna take a quick break. And when we return, we'll uh, bring you guys the next top eight match. Stay tuned, everybody. 